Hey, Sean. What's going on, man? Oh, nothing here. Why are we the only two on at this time? <laughs> Just me and you, huh? You know, I think uh, there's been so many cancellations, changes, and all that. I think everybody's a little bit kind of confused as to when what is. Yeah, I'm not sure which, uh, I wasn't sure which one the right one was either. Yeah, I kind of went and studied a bunch of emails today. And, and two of them, the last two he sent, invited us to a Zoom meeting, but it didn't say, say when or what they were, or, you know, the date or time. Right. So are we right or are we wrong? Well, he, he definitely, about his fourth, uh, I mean, uh, about two days ago, he sent, a um, um, an email saying that uh, that there was um, to those. I think I'll text him. It's six o'clock right now. I think I'm gonna text him and just tell him that you and me are on here, and ask him okay. uh, if there's a call tonight. So I'll text him and and uh, get back on the phone, call here in just a second. All right, I'll hang on here. Okay. Tim, me and Sean are on a Zoom meeting. Has tonight's Zoom meeting been canceled? I'm here. You there, Tim? No, Tim's on, though. I see, I see can you Arizona. hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. I was trying to send you a text. <laughs> I'm on, man. We, we, we thought because of all the, the last two emails we got from you invite us to a zoom meeting but didn't say date or time so we we're kind of wondering really? if people, yeah so we were wondering if people got kind of confused i had to spend about 10 or 15 minutes studying the emails to figure out that it looks like the 12th really was a, an on day well it looks like well, we have seven participants now you know i do my best to confuse people it makes it makes the calls quicker if, if nobody can figure out when they are you know, it's true. that's the way I do business, but it's not not with my friends, it's with my uh, adversaries. <laughs> that's a tenant. <laughs> oh, I understand. Hey, oh. I gotta, hey, do you remember Rachel Ackland that came last January? Yeah. Yeah, a pretty young girl and, and her husband, they got divorced. But anyway, she's going to come oh. with us uh, uh, the 26th. So we now got four, four hillbillies coming down. Well, well, good. Uh, I was I was going to tell you I talked to your buddy Paul today, and uh, I'm trying to trying to firm up a head count. I've got to make a decision on that uh, pretty soon. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we get some good commitments in, get everybody kind of locked and loaded, and I can I can lock down if I'm doing the Genius Den or uh, um, if I'm just going to stay at the hotel. I really want to do the Genius Den because. I think you guys would enjoy meeting Joe Payton. Uh, he owns the Deep Genius Den. It's a building in Deep Ellum. It's a commercial property. It's got about 25,000 square feet of, or 20,000 square feet of co-working shared office space and conference yep. rooms. Uh -huh. And then it's got three Airbnb properties that, he, that it's zoned for in the back. And then it has a corner commercial coffee shop. So it's all, he owns the building and operates kind of three businesses out of it. I've told my wife several times, I'd love to own something like that. It's just, just makes, it's just a super cool cash flowing investment strategy. And so, uh, and it's just a, it's a neat building. It's a neat place to be. Uh, so that's kind of what I'm, uh, I'm trying to get locked down. I just haven't been able to get it uh, locked down yet. Uh, Cause I was just concerned about the way the setup was going to be. Uh, but I told him we were going to make a decision. I'm going to make a decision tomorrow. He wasn't ready for me today, and I had some things come up. So uh, we should be good to go. Uh, all right, we got one, two, three, four, five. Go ahead. If you do the um, uh, Marriott, is 
that going to be the uh, the four star Marriott there on on the uh, expressway in uh, Plano? No, it's going to be the Sheraton. I didn't say Marriott, did I? No, uh, you didn't send that out to anybody. No, uh, the Sheraton in downtown Dallas. Uh, I, I really looked hard at that Quest IRA mixer, but it looks like the uh, the agenda for that night from like six to nine is really kind of not my cup of tea. Um, and so I just, uh, we're going to go to the rustic on Wednesday, the 26th and hang out. Uh And then, uh, those from out of town will be getting a link tomorrow for a group rate on on a a couple hotel rooms at the Sheridan right around the corner. And then, uh, the, the venues, the meetings either going to be in the hotel or down the street at the genius den. Uh, one or the other, they said they'd give me a shuttle to take us over there. Um, so it's coming together. It's, it's, it's going to be, I think it's going to be fun. Uh, and then I got us a private dining room buffet with Terry Black's barbecue, uh, which is like, it's the best barbecue in Dallas, in my opinion. Um, uh, it's, uh, we got a private dining room for us over there from 1130 to one. Um, they're going to give us a pit tour and some other cool stuff over there. Um, so the, so so the, the hours you're you're gonna start what time on Wednesday night? Uh, the idea is um, from seven to ten. Uh, have people there, um, uh-huh. and then go home uh, or spend the night. Uh, I'm gonna I'm, I'm I'm gonna get me and my wife to stay in town, uh, but. Uh, I know some people are from Dallas, so they'll probably just go back home. But then we'll start at 9 a.m. on Thursday. Um, and then we'll go till uh, – I think I've officially got the schedule kind of ending at 4. Uh, but I'd imagine that uh, we'll all hang out and stuff afterwards for those that don't have to get back on I-30 and, uh, and get out of town. Uh, although, heck, who wants to get on I-30 at 4 o'clock? Uh, might as well wait till six o'clock. Uh, so that's it. So I'll send I'll send out another email that Russ, you you'll have to tell me that nobody can read after uh, uh, tomorrow. But uh, so it was kind of funny. We did the call a couple weeks ago, and I was from the Airbnb property in San Antonio, and today I'm actually at my old personal residence that we signed our first corporate rental contract on uh, today. So it's a house that the rent comps would probably be 2,500 to 3,000 a month, somewhere in there. But we actually left it fully furnished and we're doing temporary housing. And um, so kind of a 30 day minimum. Um, And so uh, we got uh, the first guy that saw it, wanted it for 45 days or 60 days. I can't remember. Um, and uh, we got 3500 a month. So it's, uh, it's a pretty good little deal. A uh, lot of demand, a lot of inquiries. Uh, we think, you know, what will happen is as we get it out in front of the realtors, we'll become kind of the bridge property for people who are building a new home or sell their old home or a corporate relocation folks that are uh, looking to move into the area. Uh, I love the cash flow numbers. I was telling Jennifer, I, I just wonder if, uh, if the same numbers would kind of translate into a, any other rental property in, in, in Rockwall, because just like an Airbnb, if you can spend an extra, you know, if you can capitalize or expense some furniture and then uh, garner 50 to 75% more rent, I mean, I don't know. Uh, sounds interesting to me for sure. Um, it's a little bit heavier on the management. I mean, I'm kind of playing with it right now. I'm over here uh, uh, figuring out all the elect- – got to do the electronics manual. <laughs> I have to, like, tell people how to operate all my old stuff. Uh, but at the same time, if you did a new, a new property, the technology is so much more advanced. Like, the easiest thing for me to do was the brand-new TV and the brand-new uh, direct TV box because – when you hit setup, they basically set up themselves and said, here's what you need to do. And now, now it, you know, so it was super easy. I'm in the living room right now trying to figure out how to make the old 65 inch work with the, uh, the Blu-ray, uh, 
I'm, th- I'm about to throw the blue way, Blu-ray away, actually. Uh, just throw an Apple TV in here or something. So it's interesting. Uh, definitely a, a unique strategy. It's a great way for us to hold on to a house that we really love and that we would like to probably move back into uh, at a later date. Um, it, it's the smallest house in a very nice neighborhood with some very big houses. So um uh, it's definitely something we want to hold on to. So uh, that's where I'm calling in from today. Um, Sean, since you're the next person next to me on this screen, why don't you uh, kind of talk a little bit about what you got going on? Okay. Can everybody hear me okay? All righty. So uh, what I'm currently working on now is uh, I'm working on uh, four single family homes. Um, I'm also, uh, training a new person on doing processing for us, uh, for Daniel, myself on some of our properties with regards to acquisitions. I'm really needing somebody to do contracts when I find a deal and make sure they get over to the appropriate parties when we're, when we're buying properties, uh, including, uh, I've got a big checklist for insurance and setting everything up on uh, QuickBooks. And then additionally, uh, selling the property, need uh, a person that can do the processing, you know, the buyer, making sure we get them over to the RMLO, uh, or if they're rental properties, making sure we get leases signed timely and and all the marketing, well, not the marketing, but the administrative work is being done. So looking for training somebody on that right now uh, and get going on that end. Uh, additionally, uh, still raising capital for multifamily. Uh, we're looking at some deals now. We actually put together a team to uh, evaluate, find and evaluate opportunities and uh, with the hopes of uh, closing on an apartment deal or or at least having one under contract in first quarter 2020. Uh, so been actively meeting with investors every week, raising capital for that or for the opportunity to invest with us in a multifamily. Uh, worked with some IRA capital to uh, buy some properties uh, that I found. And so was able to put some properties in a couple of my friends' IRAs. Uh, so that was pretty cool. The Tim, the biggest need uh, immediately right now is uh, got insurance. I've got a master policy with a bunch of rental properties uh, that's coming up for renewal on March 1st. And just got a call from the agent like yesterday saying, hey, we're going to shop this. And we're two weeks away from uh our policy renewing and I don't necessarily have a carrier just yet. So uh, a little bit worried. Uh, are they all single that. family? All single family homes. Yep. In the Dallas Metroplex. Uh, uh, send me a spreadsheet and we'll get you a quote back. I mean, our standard program is super simple to do. Um, okay. I mean, we, we just, we just cracked the $150 million mark in insured properties. It's about 1500 houses across the nation. Uh, Heck, you know Craig Pettit, and we have all, you know, all, we have all of his houses, and you know how cheap he is. So if we can get all of his <laughs> houses, surely uh, we, we can we could land you and Daniel. Y'all are gen- y'all are, y'all are generous people, uh, right? <laughs> but now, uh, no, seriously, we're, we're, uh, we're, send, just send me a spreadsheet, and we'll we'll we'll, we'll bounce it off. And my partner Andy, I mean, he'll get you a quote pretty quick, and. I mean, uh, we just found a hundred house portfolio in Georgia today. So it's the rates are, rates are good. And the insurance marketplace is favorable right now for our product. Well, I'll get that over. I just finished the spreadsheet today. So I'll get that over to you. Uh, so that's always fun doing, uh, insurance renewals, making sure that it's funded. I've got multiple underlying carriers and making sure that, how much cash I have to come out of pocket to fund a renewal versus whether we're getting 
out of escrow accounts on some of our rental properties. So it's, that's always a lot of fun. So if anybody ever needs some advice on building your own portfolio and dealing with master policies, I'm pretty much an expert at that. Um, let's see what else. I have a question about your multifamily. I know you had the uh, one in Florida you were pretty close to. Uh, what have you done? Uh, what do you, what do you, I know that Sean Thompson and the group is wanting to go hundred percent multifamily now. What are you seeing in that marketplace? Uh, well, I'm a big, uh, yeah, I, you know, I'm looking at uh, maybe selling or not selling, but uh, refinancing a large chunk of my rental properties and pulling out a big, big chunk of cash. Uh, to put multifamily. Uh, the, the main thing I'm seeing is the uh, lenders are really anxious to lend in that, in that space. I'm seeing a lot of the millennials don't want to uh, own anymore. They want to rent. And uh, the rent values as opposed to the uh, loan values are really, really good right now. And I see even during a if we hit another dip in the market uh, or have, you know, if we ever went into a recession again, I think being in the price range where people can afford uh, an apartment, not luxury apartments, but where a large majority of the people rent now is the place to be. And so, yeah, I'm just really, really bullish on apartments right now and anxious to, to get in and get some deals under contract. I think, uh, what I'm really looking to do is raise $2 million of cash and just go take down these apartments or put $2 million in a fund, like a hard money fund and lend to ourselves to go purchase these properties all cash, uh, fix them up, uh, stabilize rents, and then uh, look at getting maybe like a Fannie Mae product or, or, um, do a cash out refinance in 18 to 24 months is kind of my strategy that I'm looking at heavily right now. So, well, um, I, I don't know if you caught Brad Sumrock's uh, market uh, uh, state of the market or whatever he did a couple of weeks ago. Um, uh, what's his face? Um, somebody recorded it and posted it online. I want to say it was Merrill Callister. Um, on Facebook, but uh, Brad's going to come stop by in, two, in a couple of weeks and kind of go over it with us. He really talked about employment trends and tax trends and median price and rent price appreciation and kind of market uh, saturation. And, 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 and he, I felt like he did a really good job at kind of tying it all together on, and even landlord rent laws and really talking about which markets he felt were were the most favorable and were going to remain the most favorable. Uh, everything it, he did a really good job. It's kind of macroeconomic with microeconomic with geopolitical with hyper local kind of regs. Uh, I, I think you can catch the replay, but he's gonna he's gonna come for about thirty minutes and just I th just kind of a favor to me. I said, man, I just want you to. There's so many people interested in multifamily, and I don't know anyone that personally owns as many units as you. I mean, why don't you, you'll come and kind of overview uh, your market forecast and everything and uh, I'll buy you lunch. And he said, yes. So uh, kind of the same thing with Eddie Speed. Eddie's going to come by uh, and spend about 30 minutes answering questions and talking about what he's seeing in the owner, in the seller finance market. Um, but then also he's going to update us kind of on the, uh, the legal issues uh that they're hearing about, you know, cause they were, they went with Capitol Hill two or three times last year. Um, and I know they did a lot in Austin with the Texas 100. So, uh, mm -hmm. I was down there. That's going to be a, oh, were you at the Texas, were you at the uh, Austin part? I was. Did you go to the DC as well? Uh, no, I didn't do DC, just Austin. Yeah. So, uh, I'm sure you'll be able to chime in with Eddie. So, He's going to come by. Brad's going to come by. Uh, Jeff Tesh, the CEO of RCN, is going to fly in and talk kind of capital markets and financing overview. You know, that's the company I'm doing all my loans through. Uh, so we ought to have some good stuff like that that I think will tie in with your multifamily stuff uh, at the meeting on 
to in, in a couple of weeks. Okay. So uh, that's, it. that's it for me. Greg, you're next. We can't see you or hear you, but we see your name. Let me figure out how to unmute here. Now I got a piece of tape. Ah, they, him. <laughs> <laughs> He's a witness protection program there. <laughs> uh i'm just new to the group tim i mean uh i i i know a lot of people in all these circles craig credit all those guys you know i used to uh i liquidated all the umt stuff back in the uh, financial crisis but uh i hadn't been invested in it in a while i mean i've i've been um rehabbing multifamily properties for for buyers um i was in the vendor program or my company was restructured for uh um those guys um anyway i'm just kind of lurking here just listening this is my second call i listened to the one when you were uh, in san antonio so anyway well hey that's all good you know we everybody doesn't have to talk a lot of people don't talk but uh it's it's uh it's good to hear from you and um hopefully uh we're gonna see you at the meeting in a couple weeks uh yeah no it anything yeah, well, it's an all day meeting. Uh, so okay. we're going to start at nine o'clock. Uh, it's probably going to be the genius den, but I'm going to lock that up uh, uh, tomorrow. Uh, is, is there anything specific uh, that you can think about, uh, Greg, that you would need, uh, maybe not need or won't help with or want to be uh, discussed in a roundtable type fashion at the meeting uh, in two weeks? Um, no, I'm just interested in what you said about Brad coming and uh, talking about that whole multifamily market. I mean, I, I kind of want to buy some of that stuff. I've got several warehouses, commercial property and stuff like that. So that's what I've been focused on the last three or four years. But um, multifamily, I, I'd like to pick up some single families too. So, um, but just if he did a good job of uh, economics and what's, what's in the future, I'd be interested in hearing that. Cool, cool. Mr. Klein, what you got, buddy? I was actually looking for that spreadsheet to send to you of the uh, of the insurance uh, that uh, that we need a quote on. Um, well, I'm in a unique uh, situation. I've got uh, adult children, and so I'm teaching uh, my oldest daughter how to uh, how to buy, or actually how to sell uh, owner finance properties. Uh, she's doing very well. Um, I'm also, uh, I've got a couple of uh, folks that I'm mentoring on uh, finding deals, uh, mainly in the uh, subject to arena, uh, also uh, also in the wholesale arena. I uh, had uh, some, some really good calls today with uh, brokers. Uh, one uh, was in Memphis, Tennessee, uh, a property that's about 30% occupied. Uh, but that would be unoccupied once we started doing rehab on it. It looks like it's a short sale situation. So there's a, a, um, a nonprofit that's financed this guy. And, um, and I think they're willing to take a little bit of a haircut just to get out of the deal. And then I ran across another one uh, close to Port Arthur today that uh, it's got rents that are 35% below market. So running across some really good deals, networking with brokers, um, and so that's that's going uh, going really well. Um, I also have a a group of people um, that I'm uh, working with and teaching how to find multi-family uh, properties. We call it the Look and Learn program. And so uh, we had our second meeting uh, last Friday, and uh, the two deals that uh, that I worked on today uh, came from their from their research. So trained them on Friday, and I've got live deals on what's today is it Wednesday. Um, <laughs> it's just another day, right? Um, but, uh, I got some live deals, uh, on Wednesday. So I really encouraged, uh, by that. Um, also spoke uh, to some other, uh, brokers, uh, just about off market, uh, properties. I got another gentleman that's uh, potentially coming on in March who has a database of owners. Um, and we're looking to go direct to seller excuse me, direct to seller on, uh, on the, in the multifamily arena, kind of like what we do in um, the single family uh, home arena. So um, uh, we're, we're working on uh, uh, that database and getting him trained up so he can make calls directly to apartment uh, owners 
and pitch them on uh, on selling their 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 properties. So just working on some subject to doing a lot of uh, I'm doing a lot of mentoring right now, more so really than uh, ever before in my career. Um, you know, I guess folks that aren't uh, depending on me for a paycheck, <laughs> that's the kind of mentoring that I'm talking about. Um, and so in the subject to arena and, and single family, and then, uh, and then how to find uh, properties and evaluate them in multifamily. Uh, we do have the need for the, uh, for the insurance. Um, Tim, I'll send that to you here uh, just as soon as we get off the call and uh, just let me know who I need to speak with. If it's not you, then um, Sean's going to be out of pocket tomorrow. So I'll be the, uh, the point man on that. So, um, and then, um, I did speak to a bank today about my HELOC, sent over her, sent over my tax returns. <laughs> just said, look at my tax returns and let me know if there's something you can do, uh, before we start spending a bunch of time on, you know, foolishness, pulling credit reports on this and that. So, uh, we'll see what that looks like. I have somewhat of a personal relationship with her. So hopefully that, uh, will be favorable. Uh, I've got my fingers crossed at best on that though. So. Um, yeah, that's what I'm up to. And, uh, you know, if we can, if we can solve the, uh, if we can solve the insurance need, that'll take a, a big, I think a burden off of Sean and, um, and then just uh, continuously looking for those subject to style deals of uh, low equity, uh, cash flow plays and looking for off market, uh, multifamilies, you know, perhaps where we can get direct with seller or just off market where it doesn't show up on LoopNet or one of these other you know, cattle call type, uh, websites. Those are, right. uh, those are, those are what I'm looking for. Well, cool, man. Yeah. Send me the insurance stuff. I'll get you a quote. Uh, I think you'll, you know, it's kind of funny. Everybody's up for renewal right now. It's like they want to get it knocked out before their tax, before they, they have to turn all their attention to the taxes. So, yeah. um, I sent out that email. I sent out an email about it earlier this week and we've just been swamped. Uh, I think we, he, he said something like we quoted like 600 total assets already this week. So, Send it over. Andy will get it working on it and he'll send it back. Uh, well, well, I'm Jewish. I I'm not one of these uh, generous guys. I don't know how we got our wires crossed, but. <laughs> uh, well, you yeah. know, but it was, it, it is was, what it is. Nah, totally. Mr. Thomas, you're next on the screen. Cool. Hey, on your, um, uh, uh, Airbnb. Uh, that you're managing and you were talking about it being a little more intensive. Uh, do you know Brantley Gunn from Austin? Uh, Brantley has got a, a bunch of, um, he's a young fella, uh, early 20s. Uh, he's got a bunch of Airbnbs in the Austin area, and I think some in Greenville, Mississippi. But uh, I spent some time with him last year, and he's, he's managing his entire Airbnb portfolio from a $3 VA working full-time for him in the Philippines. And he spends like a, an hour a month just kind of reviewing with her what, what's going on. Uh, so, you know, if, if, you, if you're very big in that or, you know, need something like that, he's a good resource to talk to. I, I, could, I could bring him in on a Zoom call with us or something sometime if anybody wants to kind of know some of that, but good guy. Okay. Um, uh, as far as what I've got going, uh, a lot of my activity lately has been uh, dealing with the Opportunity Zone uh, situation. Um, I've been um, putting together uh, details of um, all of the Opportunity Zone property in Arkansas. Uh, there's, um, I start off with a database of about 2 million uh, pieces of property. I'm trying to bump that up against different lists of vacancies and uh, owners' phone numbers and um, tax delinquent properties and things along that line and uh, uh, just kind of develop a, a number of years of um, um, uh, of, of inventory to kind of work on in the opportunity zones. Um, uh, that's been going real good. Um, the uh, Quest Boot Camp in um, uh, March 14th, I'll be speaking on that thing. So I've been kind of working on speeches and stuff. Uh, I think I could share a screen kind of who or what is at that deal. Um, see, if I, see if I work this out smoothly or not. Um, not not working. I don't think so. Okay. But anyway, um, so I'll be uh, doing some 30 minute speeches on uh, land and land buying at that boot camp, uh, uh, buying with defective titles, things like that. And then after those speeches, you'll have rotating groups of 50 people doing Q&A with each of the speakers there. 
So uh, kind of working forward to that, looking forward to it and such. Uh, sales are going absolutely nuts. Uh, I've got a lot of parcels of land um, that people are just calling me at random for. Uh, I've got no marketing, no advertising. It's just long-term investment that, uh, and I'm, you know, selling it whenever I get calls, but I'm really not marketing it. I do have a plan to um, start marketing things like that within a couple of years. And I've hired a, a, a title company um, manager that uh, is going to be working with me to uh, try to organize all the title work, make sure we don't have any flaws and um, see what all we got to get done to start uh, cranking in the sales in a couple of years. Um, been an absolute failure on Sasha's here to say hi. Oh, hi. Uh, been an absolute failure on um, uh, getting um, uh, re remodels and repairs done, and um, I got to got to build a system on that. Kind of fell there. Uh, the uh, collection judgment stuff like that. That's how the business is going great. Uh, I do have one question for the group: um, small multi units like triplexes, quadplexes. Uh, the the cities around Arkansas have started requiring all that stuff to be sprinkled and you know adding twenty thirty fifty thousand uh, dollar sprinkler bills to uh, real inexpensive purchases. Curious if y'all been going through that for years or or how how y'all deal with that side of it. I don't see that in Dallas. I mean they don't have sprinkler requirements on. Uh, no. I don't think I think it's less than twelve or I, I know twelve units don't because. I've seen and been a part of watching them get remodeled, but uh, I don't know at what level. Uh, I think it may be just on new construction. I'm not sure. Daniel, okay. you're, I think you. Yeah, I mean, we've had we've had triplexes and quads, and 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 we've never uh, I've never dealt with a sprinkler system on uh, any uh, any type of uh, property that size. Well, you know, we're we're looking at. I mean, I, I most of the units I've bought have been five or six grand a door. Uh, other people I know pay up to. 30, 40,000 a door. And when you throw a sprinkler system into that, you're, you're sunk. Uh, you know, the numbers just don't work. Nope. I like California. <laughs> uh, Arkansas leading the pack, it sounds like. Anyway, that's all I got. I was on mute. Hey, Jay, how you doing today, man? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, we can. Okay, sorry. You know, so compared to everybody else, well, I've just been focusing on a refinance of a portfolio of eight houses. It's been kind of a challenge. I was looking at a non-recourse loan from Core West Financials. So that's been a one challenge. So, but finally it's almost done. So we finally have all the numbers, but it took me almost two and a half months to get that process completed. So but it's a good learning for me. So it's interest only non-recourse loan. Yeah. Uh, did you do the 10 year? No, I did the five year because it has a prepayment penalty. So I didn't know what I you know what happens in like after five years because I can't sell these things or refinance without paying a big penalty. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so if you did if you did the five year with Corvest, then you get the last what is it four months with no penalty to refi. Yeah, last, yeah, and, uh, yeah, last six months. Yeah. Yeah. Who you work? Are you working with Joaquin over there or who? I got John Prince and David Levy. So, you know, I think one is in New York, one is in California. But I think they yeah. have an open house in the first week of March in Dallas. I just got an invite from them. Yeah, I did too. Uh, the um, if if you have any problems, let me know. I can pull strings at kind of the top level there. The CEO uh, Beth and Joaquin, they're kind of one of their C, their big main C level guy. Kind of old friends, colleagues, competitors of mine from the B two R days. Okay. Anyway, it was a fun experience in you know, trying to qualify for this loan. So you may be the first person that's ever uh, referenced a large portfolio loan as a fun experience. 
and it was, it was like learning you know so it, i'm saying it's in that way it was kind of good learning process so maybe next time i'll be more smart and we'll know what the paperwork is and everything so because these guys don't disclose a lot of paperwork till the very end so yeah that industry is known for it But it helps me, it helps my portfolio because of these, because I have a lot of these houses are in Collin and Denton County. So the property taxes were kind of hurting me on my rentals, so there's a few of them. So so now I'm just doing a interest only just to build some cash flow for the next five years and then come back and do a different loan. Yeah, yeah. Well, that hey, I mean, makes sense. I mean, and you got the non-recourse, uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's always a good feature on those loans. Uh, anything else you got working on? No, so now I'm going to start focusing. Once I come get this thing done, then I'll start focusing on what I should do next. So I go back for looking cool. for single family and or if something else comes up. Right on. Well, uh, you going to come to the meeting in a couple of weeks? Yes. So that's on the 20, it's the first week of March, right? The one you said. Uh, no, it's the, it's the 27th. 27th the last February. week of February. Yeah, it's two weeks from tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, sure. I'll come for that. So. Cool, cool. I'll get everybody all the information once I finalize everything tomorrow. Uh, well, cool, man. Uh, make sure you stay in touch. Israel, yes. what are you up to? I'm not sure Israel can hear me. Uh, Victor. You're on deck. Hi guys, how's everybody doing? Great, Victor, how are you today? Pretty good, man. I uh, kind of got short timers disease because I'm going on a little vacation break tomorrow. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, having a hard time focusing on anything but that. But uh, in the meantime, I. When I listen to you guys, you know, I realize that I really have a lot to learn. I mean, I really am uh, pretty much of a rookie here with all this finance stuff. It's pretty, it, it can be intimidating, but what I, my goal is to not, you know, bail out. I just want to try to learn from you guys. So um, that's where I'm at. I don't really have anything to share with you guys. You guys are pretty much out of my league. Um, you know, I've just been doing, you know, acquisitions a, as much as I can. And I've been struggling with that recently because of uh, the competition factor. And I'm looking for new ways and different ways to try to try to reach uh, sellers, which of course is the big challenge. Um, in terms of growth, I, I really want to learn how to um, do. I, I want to learn how to do the subject twos, and then you know, uh, the owner finance. I, I want to learn how to. Um, uh, get more properties, you know, use leverage and, uh, and when it makes sense to, to use leverage and, um, try to grow, you know, my business that way. But, um, you know, I, I'm nowhere close to, I guess, where, where a lot of these guys are, a lot of you fellas are, and that's great, great for you, but I just don't know, uh, if I'm, you know, if y'all are out of my league or not. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, what, what I found out, uh, at B2R is many times, uh, and, and I see it hold true everywhere, many times the problems a 10 unit person is experiencing are simply multiplied by the, the 100 units. And a lot of times the one or two unit guy or gal may actually have a better solution for it because they're actually paying attention to the small stuff. Uh, and um, you know, so I, I, I wouldn't uh, I, I, I wouldn't even entertain that honestly because uh, many times the uh, methods of the small guy could vastly improve the uh, the outcome for the large guy and the things that the large guy has learned and uh, changed over his career can save a lot of pain and money um, for the smaller guys. So um, I wouldn't say I, we're definitely not out of your league. Uh, 
uh, uh, it, it's just, uh, I mean, uh, if you want to look, the owner finance sub two stuff, Sean and Daniel, who you kind of heard talking earlier. Yeah. Uh, uh, Daniel was joking. He is a very giving person. Uh, and, and, you know, you can go sit down and talk to him. When it comes to insurance renewals. <laughs> oh, okay. 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 <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, so, so he's not giving when it comes to insurance renewals. Otherwise, he's a very giving person. Uh, yeah, and, uh, you know, uh, I'd say get with them. Are you going to uh, come to the meeting on uh, the 27th? Uh, I think okay. you'll, I, I, I mean, uh, I think what you'll find is there's a lot of value you can add and a lot of value you can glean. Uh, from being a part of conversations with people that uh, have been where you are and uh, either uh, got hung up there or solved the problem. Uh, and um, it's, uh, it's the old, whole ladder to success. Why, why, why climb the first five rungs if you can hop on the ladder, you know, right in the middle of it? Absolutely. Okay. Well, I'm going to stick with this thing uh, and try to try to educate myself, you know, on the side as much as I can as well. Um, you know, it's great to have uh, such a, such an experienced group. Uh, so I'm fortunate about that, but um, you know, thanks again to everybody. And I look forward to meeting you guys. Hey, Victor, Good this deal, is, man. Sean. this is Sean. So uh, I think the, the really cool thing you'll find out about, uh, most of us that have had success in real estate is we like to give back as well. And we touched on that a little bit, but just a, a question for you. Are you working full time or what are you doing full time? Well, I do have a, a, a job, job full time right now. And then um, I kind of do this on the side. So, um, gotcha. yeah. You know, and I'm, and I'm how much are you, com how much time on a weekly basis are you committing to your real estate? Uh, I would say a fair amount, probably, uh, 20 plus hours. And then okay. uh, if I'm, if I'm in the, in the search mode for, uh, properties for an upcoming auction, you know, I'll end up, uh, after hours, you know, driving properties, uh, for another, you know, that, that probably takes me an, another 20 hours a month. And, uh, so, you know, I'm looking to try to try to make my, uh, operation more efficient. Uh, so that I can, um, you know, there's only so many hours of the day and uh, I've got a lot of responsibilities. Fortunately, my, my boys are, I don't know if it's fortunate or unfortunate, but my two sons are off at college. <laughs> it, it, it's, uh, okay. it's a little easier around the house, but it's more expensive, you know. <laughs> um, anyway, well, I would say, I, based I, on your, all about yeah. that. I'd say based on your 20 hours, I mean, this, this group was a, definitely a great fit for you. Uh, if you're putting that much time and effort into it, I think, uh, you know, getting with some seasoned people to help you fast track is really, really going to be good for you. So great. You know, well, I, know, thank you. I know Tim, Daniel, myself, the rest of us, we're, we're looking forward to helping you uh, fast track your business. Man, that, that's oh, but I'm, awesome. glad you, I'm, I'm really glad you said that too, Victor, because one of the things we're going to spend a little bit of time on on the 27th is paying for college and uh, finding ways to pay for college uh, and save tax dollars or maybe maximize benefits from the government. So uh, it's something that I'm very concerned with as a, having a 19 year old son in college and a 10 year old that wants to go one day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, not, it's, something that, it's something that Russ, who's on the call is very concerned with. Uh, the, the, you know, it's, the college system is very, in my opinion, rigged against the middle class uh, the ultra rich don't really care. The middle class are the ones that have to care. The poor people get it for free. Uh, and, uh, the middle class people kind of have to pay full price. Uh, and, um, uh, I, I think, I think there's a lot of ways to go ahead. Who was that? <laughs> it was me. And I said, uh, in 10 years of club soccer did not pay for college. <laughs> Didn't pay for college for me either, brother. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Tim. Israel hey, here. Hey, Israel. How you doing? Hello, buddy. Hey, doing good. Great. Just let me know when to speak. <laughs> well, uh, I think we were pretty much done with Victor. Am so I on? Take your turn now. All right. Well, hello, everybody. I'm Israel. I'm here in Dallas. Nice to meet you all. I am. Um, 
just a little bit of my background. I, uh, I'm, I have spent uh, about 15 years uh, in traditional, what's called retail real estate. I'm a broker and have a you know, company with about 10 agents. Uh, most of my work has been in the traditional space, retail real estate. A couple years ago, I really started uh, interested, you know, getting interested in, um, in the investing side and, you know, beginning to build a portfolio of rentals. I uh, started attending multifamily meetings quite a bit, actually invested as a passive investor in a couple of deals. Uh, and these days, I am, um, Tim knows this, I'm looking for properties that I can uh, rehab. I have a couple of good contractors. I'm trying to flip some property here in DFW in order to build my balance sheet and be able to play at a higher level. Uh, part of my strategy is uh, once that happens, I want to start parking some money into some rentals. I don't owe any rentals at the moment. One that I had last year, I sold. And so to be frank, I have a lot of experience on the retail side of the business, um, but I'm just really getting my feet wet into flipping deals and wholesaling. I have been putting in a lot of time in education with local groups um, and anything that I can get as far as mentoring to fast track my business, I really need to collapse time frames here and use my experience. I do real estate full time. Um, I will really be appreciated. For instance, today I got a, you know, a lead and I went to saw a beautiful property in an area here called McKinney and uh, the property is great. It would retail very nicely. Uh, but it needs work, it needs foundation work, and it need, needs a good update, it needs new carpet paint, and so on. About a 35, 6, 3,600 square foot home, five bedroom, four bath. So in my opinion, this would be a good possibility to either wholesale or maybe what we call wholetail, where you kind of clean it up and bring it into MLS and try to get more money. I'm trying to make that decision because I haven't wholesale or wholesale anything yet. Uh, so really looking for any ideas, um, how to handle that. Uh, again, I, get, I can sell on, on MLS anything, but uh, is, this, is, this is an area when I'm, when I'm starting to get my feet wet, trying to locate properties that I can also wholesale to build some, some cash flow. Yeah, so I saw your text on that today, Israel. Okay. And if you don't mind, I'll just kind of spend a little bit of time just t telling you, answering your question, but also kind of addressing the group. Um, Absolutely. So wholetailing has been a pretty good process for us in the last couple months. Um, okay. It, it, it um, It's just kind of a middle ground, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. So like the property on Live Oak, for instance, uh, that's mm -hmm. a house in, uh, that I'm, wholesaling in Mesquite for those that don't know uh it it'll be worth 185 to 200 once it's fixed up uh I bought it for 120,000 well I have it under contract for 120,000 uh we got a new roof and everything put on before closing so the house right now is structurally and mechanically sound so uh I mean well let me take that back we had the foundation looked at and our mm -hmm. foundation guy, after his measurements, we'd have to spend about 3000 on the foundation. So, Israel, one of the reasons that I was asking 135 and kind of, yeah. kind of firm on that number mm -hmm. is at 135 I'd make about $15,000, mm -hmm. which, you know, is, is, is okay. okay. Uh, I mean, you know, you're definitely not going to retire making $15,000 a, a pop, but, you know, uh, it's okay. Uh, anything less than 145, and I got to consider exit uh, alternative exit strategies. So to retail that house at 185, and uh, I think you would, I would end up spending uh, on, on that house to retail it. I would probably spend about 20 grand. 
mm-hmm. so you know i got the 120 i paid for it i got 20 grand in uh, rehab costs i'm in it for 140 i got closing costs and carry costs now i'm in it for uh uh you know just call it 145 uh and i sell it for 185 I walk away with about 167, 170, right? Uh, I'm I'm making you know probably 20 to 25 thousand net net mm-hmm. if I were to retail it. It is ten thousand dollars more, but you know it's going to take four to six months. Um, well, then I look at wholesaling that property. Because to mm-hmm. wholesale that property, all I would have to do is clean it out, fix the foundation, fix any cracks. I don't even have to paint. I just have to fix any cracks. Basically make it where it's going to barely pass a conventional mortgage. And then I can put it on the market for what I believe to be 125 I mean 165 And here's mm-hmm. where that math comes from. Right? at one, uh, If it's a 185 house that needs 20 grand worth of work because I'm going to do five of it by the fixing the foundation. The as is value of that house is about 165. So that's just kind of the way I come up with that number. I, I'm basically going to put it out for sale at the as is value. Now it's not the as is value for an investor. It's just the as is value of, you know, the way an appraiser would look at it. Uh, but the only way you can take that approach is if it will pass a conventional mortgage because anyone that's going to pay that probably isn't an investor. It's probably a homeowner and you know, they're going to need to get a loan. Mm-hmm. So if I sold it for 165, right, I'm going to walk with 150. I'd be in it for 125, 130, right? So I make 120, mm-hmm. but I make 120 in less than 60 days and I don't end up going long um on the on the rehab and everything so for me wholesaling is a good middle ground for structurally sound properties that maybe you don't want to have on the balance sheet for too long mm-hmm. what if they need foundation and roof like the one i saw needs foundation and it needs roof but everything else will pass you gotta a, fix an inspection uh-huh. You got to fix them, uh, uh-huh. but I've, I haven't been wholesaling houses that are slabs that need foundation work because I've had a bad run with slab foundations lately of, you know, having to replace the sewer line by the time I fix the, uh-huh. I fix the foundation and get it tested. And, you know, so a lot of my wholesale candidates are houses that are pure and beam or the uh-huh. houses that do not need foundation work. Because if mm-hmm. I don't have to test the foundation, I don't have to test the plumbing. If I don't have to test the plumbing, there's no reason I would need to replace the plumbing. Yeah. So this, that's mm-hmm. just now, if you've got a house in McKinney that was built in the 80s and has PVC plumbing in it, then, you know, you're probably going to be okay. Even if you mm-hmm. do have to do some plumbing work, it's not going to be a repipe, you know. Um, mm mm-hmm. You know, yeah. where the repot comes in is trying to get, trying to repair uh, cast iron. Right. This home is on a slab and it was built in the 90s. It's in a Stonebridge ranch in McKinney. Yeah, so the foundation doesn't scare me on that because it was built in the 90s. It definitely has good electrical still and right. has good and has uh, PVC plumbing in it. So even if you do have a break, you're probably just going to have a break instead of an entire plumbing system failure like these cast iron houses that I'm dealing right. with. So that's probably a good candidate for the whole telling. Sounds like it to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where I am. You know, I'm working on these, uh, looking for the yields, uh, you know, trying to uh, raise uh, some private money as well uh, to build a business. And, um, you know, any, um, mentoring that I can get so I can collapse time frames and use my experience to advance faster is, is very, very much welcome. For sure, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's All where right. I am. Well, I don't have my phone in front of me. Who's next?
I think this is it. I like the backdrop. <laughs> yeah, you like Israel's fancy. <laughs> Let's go, or I, like, Dallas. <laughs> I like Tim's background with the <laughs> chandelier. <laughs> I swear I'm paying attention. <laughs> no, I'm actually uh, I'm standing outside washing off the, the gas grill. Uh, just that we'll end up high, we're, we're making a list of everything we're having to do for this guy to move into our house next week so that next time we won't have to do it ourselves. But it's still a lift, you know? Uh, yes. All right. Uh, no one else has anything, huh? Hey, Tim? Yes, sir. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the agenda for the 27th that you haven't put together yet already? Yeah, so we're going to start on, we're gonna start on uh, Thursday morning. Uh, with some welcome and introduction type stuff. Uh, just make sure, probably do the introductions and the uh, the whole, you know, what I'm here for stuff uh, for the for first 30, 45 minutes, just because we're going to have a bunch of new new people. Um, and then um, I'm going to send around a list for uh, hot sheets uh, or hot seats. Uh, anybody that wants to be on the hot seat or wants to present their business, we'll probably, I'm going to try to have two or three of those uh, over there. I got Eddie coming. I got the RCN guy coming. I got Brad coming. I've got um, – I want to have another roundtable on financing. Uh, and I'm trying to get um, – it looks like I may have uh, Austin Good coming in uh, to talk about Opportunity Zones with you, Russ. Because uh, he's the only person I know that's actively developing in Opportunity Zone. Um, and he helped me out a lot on the land, on some land that I was trying to buy in an Opportunity Zone. Um, but the idea, and then um, I was going to get you in my He's an investor, started out as a realtor, so then started flipping, and now he's doing syndications in Opportunity Zones. Uh, he does a lot of even assisted living in opportunity zones because uh, mm -hmm. it's really easy to hit the employment numbers there. Uh, <laughs> you know, if, you, if you've got a full-time, uh, but he's done some duplex developments, the townhome developments and opportunity zones. Um, he's got a lot of practical knowledge based off of actual experience of running, of, of doing the development. But I thought we'd get him and you up there, talk about y'all's experience. Uh, I want to talk about um, about the college kind of estate planning. I think that's something else. Tax planning, college planning, uh, estate planning is kind of a section that I'm, I want to build a little agenda around because uh, I think that's something that's always important to all of us. I mean, you know, this Obamacare stuff and with some of the accelerated depreciation we were able to take and some other things, you know, they almost put my kids on Medicaid this year, uh, which was so weird that to have Blue Cross send me a letter saying that uh, my kids may, may need to go on Medicaid uh, just because our personal situation was such that and the way the business has flowed through, it just didn't hit our personal balance sheet. So there's some crazy stuff going on that we've learned that we're, uh, we're taking advantage of. Uh, all the, the, the are, you, are, you saying, are you saying it didn't hit your balance sheet or it didn't hit your p and L? I mean, it didn't hit – when I said it didn't hit my balance sheet, what I meant was it didn't flow through to my personal return. Yeah. Um, my business may have paid some taxes, but I didn't. But when you start looking at it, you know, it, it, uh, <laughs> it just makes a big difference. Uh, it makes a huge difference when you're, you know, getting half off at college and saving, you know, $20,000 a year worth of medical insurance. Um, so, because it had gotten to where our health care, our medical insurance was, um, God, it was over 2200 a month. Uh, and then some things, I want to talk to you all about some things I'm doing with Credit Life. 
I've taken out a couple credit life policies on some of my bigger mortgages. Um, and it's just a, it's another hedge that uh, is, is a lot cheaper than, you know, a 30 year term policy would be at my age. Um, so I want to talk about that and just kind of see what everybody else is doing to ultimately make sure they get to keep and end up having as much money as possible out of all the money they work to make. Amen. <laughs> but that, I mean, that's, that, that's the loose agenda, Russ. I mean, I, I, I'm hoping that we have enough volunteers to present their business in the new format that I kind of came up with after dissecting. Well, I'm going to give them, I'm going to give them their three, their four slides to present. Um, that that spurs enough conversation. Um, and I don't want it to all be Dallas people, right? I mean, I'd like some other people to present that way. It spurs enough conversation to where, uh, I think we got to leave some time in the afternoon to go the direction, uh, that the conversation takes us. Great. I didn't hear the word barbecue in there. Well, the barbecue is the lunch. <laughs> I just know well, you're having lunch. Yeah, well, you know, that's my that's my everyday priorities. My priority for this weekend is to focus on my business and get advice from uh all you guys. And and, and get my lovely wife involved in it. <laughs> All right, folks, it's 7 o'clock. I got to go get home to a sick kid and finish up at this house. Hey, Tim, I sent that uh, that Excel spreadsheet to Tim at timherridge.com. I got it, man. I'm about to send it to you and Andy. We'll get, it, we'll get it cracking. All right. Hey, Tim, hey. what y'all doing? Do y'all know what you're doing, mobile homes on insurance, Tim? Uh, I think we just decided not to cover them, Russ. Uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the, that, that's the uh, that's what we do, but uh, I, I'll, I can double check on that. Cool. All right. Oh, Craig Foster was trying to unmute himself 30 minutes ago. I don't think he, he was able to figure it out. Uh, and I don't see him on here anymore. Uh, all right, everybody. Uh, good to hear from you. Uh, we'll, we'll see you next week and uh, we'll talk before then. All right, thanks, guys. Well, thank uh, you. Yeah, bye, everyone. Bye bye. bye.